fine. But I'm still kind of indifferent. And then I like, read up on it and realized the aerospace industry had lost half a million jobs in the last 14 years. Something bad was going on in this industry. Who am I to tell you that? You're in it. And so, fine, so I agreed. Our first meeting would be the end of September. Then September 11 strikes. I live then and now four blocks from ground zero. I was going to go to Princeton that day, that morning, but I had some extra writing I needed to do, so I just stayed home. Plane goes in. Another plane goes out my window. It's right there. I won't recount all these details. Uh, my daughter was four years old at the time, attending school two blocks north of the North Tower. Of course, they evacuated the school. I finally met up with my daughter and my nine-month-old son. She took it pretty well. She cried just once. I'm holding her, I said, we have to go north, up to Grandma and Grandpa. She said, well, we can't go back home? I said, no. No, both towers have fallen. There's dust everywhere, even inside the apartment. And then a tear hit her eye, and she said, but what will happen to my stuffed animals? And I wrote about this experience in an email that I shared with friends and family. And that email got forwarded many, multiple times over. And for months thereafter, I reliably received packages in the mail with stuffed animals. <laughs> People concerned about how she felt. Well, at that point, how indifferent can I be? As I was before, we just, I just lost my backyard to two airplanes. Duty called. I was a changed person. All of a sudden I said, yes, I'm ready for this aerospace commission. Yes. I'm mad as hell. I didn't really know what I was mad at. I was just mad. Because not only was the nation attacked, my backyard was attacked. So there's the first meeting a couple of, couple of weeks after September 11th. Twelve commissioners. I remember this distinctly, walking in. That room was filled with testosterone, okay? It was, there's everybody sitting at the table, occupying space, you know. It was, uh, you know, there was general this and secretary of navy that and member of congress. That, Now, I, it's not like I don't have testosterone, but it's like, it's like the Bronx testosterone. You know, it's, it's a different kind. It's the kind where you get in a fight in the street, you kick the guy's butt, okay? It's not I build missile systems testosterone. That's a, that's a whole other kind of testosterone. <laughs> Even the women on the commission had testosterone. One of, the, I'm trying, uh, one of them, may she rest in peace, Tilly Fowler. Tilly Fowler. She has like a military base in her district, former member of Congress, died just a few weeks ago. She had this southern accent that was perfectly tuned, perfectly tuned, to utter the following statement. Kiss my grits. You know, it was one of those kind of, it was like you didn't want to cross her because she would just, she, she could like tell you where to go with that, just, just with a knife. And who else did we have? We had this woman with like flaming blonde hair. So where's the testosterone? I'm going to tell you. Who was she? She was like chief aerospace analyst for Morgan Stanley. Okay, I won't mention her name because to keep her unknown. 
<laughs> but what that meant was, give her a whole life as a, as a Navy brat, okay? She's got the whole industry by the gonads, okay? <laughs> So this room was just full of testosterone, and then here we are after the terrorist attacks. Everybody's talking about what they would have done if they were flying the plane. Yep. Would have done a 360 barrel roll. But, you know, I thought a barrel roll was something you get at Krispy Kreme. You know, I didn't know barrel roll was a, like a flight maneuver. I don't think that way. Like I said, I don't know how to fly. The end of that day, <laughs> of course, we did not go to Vegetarian Delight for dinner. <laughs> Went to a steakhouse, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, had slabs of beef. <laughs> what was for dinner? Beef was for dinner. <laughs> Anyhow, so on that, on that commission, we went around. I'm, I'm probably talking too long here. I'm sorry. I just have like a cup, like just a little bit more. Can you hang on? You okay? Okay, okay. I didn't know. I. I So, so we go around the world because what's the world climate that's influencing what's going on here in America? We visit China. This is before they put a man in space. And I had the stereotype of China where everybody's on bicycles in the, in the big boulevards. We get to China, everybody's driving Audis and Mercedes Benz and, and, and Volkswagens. Something's changing in China. And then I went home and like, looked at the label on everything I have, half of it is made in China. So, so, so some money is going to China, okay? Then we were toward the Great Wall, a military project. The Great Wall. And I said, let me just try this, okay? I looked far and wide. I didn't see any evidence of technology at all, just the bricks that made the wall. I just tried it. I pulled out my cell phone, called my mother in Westchester. And she said, oh, Neil, you're home so soon? It was like, no, I'm on the Great Wall of China. That's the best connection I've ever made with her with my cell phone. <laughs> Nobody in China is going, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> That's not happening there. It's happening in this whole Northeast Corridor. You can't get on the Amtrak Metro Liner without, without the, the signal coming in and out just by passing a tree. So when China said, we're going to put somebody in orbit, sure enough, I knew, I knew that was going to happen. We all knew. China says they want to put somebody on the moon. I got no doubts. They want to say they want to put somebody on Mars. I will have no doubts. And think about it. Mars is already red, you know, so that could be like a marketing thing. <laughs> they could, like, make that one happen fast. Told you I could say what I want up here. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> then we went to Star City in Russia, outside of Moscow. You know, like the center of the space program there. And we meet the head of the, of the, of the, of the center, and we all cram into his office. And he said, halfway through, he said, time for vodka. And I said, it's 1030 in the morning. <laughs> he opens up the cabinet and the glasses and, and we all, and so there it is. And... Uh, you know, I don't do, I never did this, right? So I pick up the vodka glass, it's this little tiny glass, and not all of my fingers fit on it. So my pinky stuck out. That was bad, okay? I don't think you drink vodka in Russia with your pinky sticking out. And I was just tasting it, because I like sipping wine, and I, it's like, no. This was, so once again, there was another stratum of testosterone going on that I could not rise to. But the visit that really, really made the hair rise on the back of my neck, if I had hair there to rise, it would rise. It rose. We were in Paris, I think was the city, meeting European aerospace vision executives. They just put out their document, the 30-year document or 25-year document. Plus, they're like working on their Galileo system, which competes directly, basically, 